Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on youth in the hobby, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. My name is Curtis, my call sign is Kilo5 Charlie Lima Mike. And today we're going to be continuing on our series about youth and the hobby. Now, before we get started, please make sure you click on the subscribe button down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, as well as the bell icon so you don't miss anything. We have in the past talked about a couple clubs. Uh, last week, as a matter of fact, we talked about the Yacht Club and we talked about the Youth Amateur Radio Club. Um, those are two of the spotlight uh, clubs or organizations. Um, that are really focused on youth. And I'm going to try and squeeze in another video probably next Monday, the last day of the month, on Youth on the Air. But I wanted to do something a little bit more uh, personalized um, or down to a person uh, before I did that. And we went the wide level with the club, now we're going individual level. So I found. Uh, several hams over the past month that are young hams anywhere between um, nine when they started and you know like they're 18 now or something like that and you know some of them are 12 15 uh, and different things like that so I found four of them that really stuck out to me with some of the stuff that they did and some of the things that they're doing uh, in amateur radio I'm, I'm sure there's probably more out there you know don't get me wrong I'm sure there's probably plenty of young amateurs out there that are making a, a name for themselves so to speak but these are the ones that I found uh, before we go into them though, though um, if you have somebody in your club or that you know of that is a young amateur radio operator you know say 18 or less um, that has done something for your local area and has really you know stepped out uh, ahead of everybody else make sure that you say something to them um, say something to your um, your section manager um, you know our section has a young ham of the year award um, we have um, the young ham uh, section manager which we're going to talk about as well in this video um, and I'm sure there's probably other sections out there that do st that have stuff tailored more specifically for youth um, and I hope that ours continues to bolster that youth in this section as well. Okay, so the first one we're going to, going to be talking about is a Jonathan Dormany. Now, this 12-year-old uh, is a young amateur radio operator. He got his license in January of 2018 um, after he got the uh, technician class study guide from his parents the month before for Christmas. Now, this young amateur radio operator um, is appears to be very intelligent and the reason I say that is because he, he was among the top 300 Broadcom masters and what the masters is actually an acronym for math applied science technology and engineering for rising stars um, what he did was is he made a a text radio um, that would that you could send text messages back and forth over the airwaves um, between two independent radios um, without using cell phones or uh, cell phone towers without using anything else it's all peer-to-peer -peer. so this was his science project that he did last year and uh, he won regionals with it where wherever he's from um, I'm not sure exactly where he's from, but he won his regional science fair on it, and he went to state. And at state, he did fairly well with it, as, uh, from what I remember with this. Um, he was named the top sixth grader at the state science fair in 2018-2019. Um, and he's saying that he's going to take his love of the hobby and improve on this radio concept, this text messaging radio concept, uh, improve upon it and uh, go again next year in the 2019-2020 science fair. So this kid, here he is 12 years old, 
He's among the top 300 uh, in the Broadcom Masters. Oh, and uh, in this list, there is 2,348 students, and these are middle-aged students, I believe, um, in 37 states. So he was in the top 300 out of the 3,000 plus uh, kids that were nominated for this award. And of those 3,200 or 3, 2,348 nominees, he was one of nine that was homeschooled. So only nine of those out of those 2,000 plus kids were homeschooled. He is hoping that he does better next year, um, and he wants to make this where it can be used for something during emergencies uh, and not have to rely on cell phone towers and whatnot. So anyways, uh, Jonathan, kudos to you uh, for what you've done and congratulations on winning your regional and uh, for going to state. And I hope that you make uh, good headway in your project for next year. Okay, so next up we're gonna be talking about a young man uh, story that I heard that I saw on the yacht Facebook group and his name is Caleb his call sign is Kilo Robert 5 zebra or Zulu <laughs> law enforcement here zebra Zulu hard time sometimes anyways um, Caleb was recently awarded the AMSAT rover award for working satellites in um, in different maidenhead grid squares other than his home QTH now and the AMSAT rover uh, award is, is somewhat like soda. Um, you're, you're hunting different people in different uh, maidenhead grid squares. And he was number 46 that participated in this um, contest, I guess you could say. And I will have a picture of him um, on the blog that corresponds with this, uh, with this video. So make sure you head on over to everythinghamradio.com and check that out. Um, but he has, basically it is, um, you get points are gained for linear and digital satellites, uh, planning the passes, notifying the satellite communi community via social media at least 24 hours in advance and on the day that you're doing it. Um, his father says that it was great spending time with Caleb as we worked together to earn, to each earn this award. I recommend it to anyone in amateur radio satellite operation, a whole new world of opportunity for young hams. So Caleb, congratulations on, the, on this award. Uh, you know, satellites is something that is, is very interesting. Um, it's very different than standard HF or standard FM or AM operations. Um, being that it's typically um, an uplink on 440 and a downlink on two, on two meters. Um, so you kind of have, have to have a crossband, uh, a dual receive radio to do it with. And also the antennas are typically, uh, or for the best results, have to be a Yagi antenna. Um, and you can do it with just a handheld Yagi, um, or you can go all out and get a full-blown azimuth uh, rotor uh, for a beam and put on your tower and your computer can control where it's at so you can track the satellites. But he did it all by hand. Um, so kudos for him and his father working together with a great, you know, great time to spend together as father and son and do something that's fun for both of them. So Caleb, again, congratulations on that award. Okay, so next up we're going to be talking about the AWRL North Texas Section Youth Coordinator. Um, and her name is Catherine Forson. Her call sign is Kilo Tango 5. Kilo uh, Mary Foxtrot. Um, she recently accepted the position for the section youth coordinator, um, and she is she was first licensed in 2013 at the age of nine. She upgraded to general in 2017 and received her extra in 2018. Uh, she enjoys helping with the Plano Balloon Festival, uh, Meals on Wheels, as well as other public service events. She's also a trained storm spotter and a member of the Collin County Airways uh, group. So Catherine has completed, uh, competed with several different amateur radio-based science fair projects at the district, regional, and state levels. 
her project that uses the FT8 digital mode to explore how time of day affects radio propagation won second place in the physics and astronomy category at the 2018 Texas Science and Engineering Fair. She also won a special award at the Dallas Regional Science and Engineering Fair, uh, both junior and senior levels from the McKinney Amateur Radio Club. She has many interests. Uh, she began playing piano at the age of four. She's a sophomore and an honor student at Sep uh, Shepton High School in Plano and is a member of the Silver Stampede Band where she plays tuba, uh, sousaphone, and is learning bass trombone. She is a altar server and children's lector at her church, uh, but she is done great uh, since taking over as youth coordinator since yeah since taking over as youth coordinator here in North Texas uh, during field day her and her dad um, went to several different clubs around the section and uh, spent some time there with field day uh, she was uh, mentioned or she was uh, spotlighted in uh, QST magazine a couple months ago I believe in the July uh, episode or the July um, QST issue, I believe, is where she was spotlighted at. So uh, read that if you haven't already. Uh, if you don't have that, um, I'm going to try and find a link to the story. Um, and if I do, I'll have a link in the description below. So, uh, Catherine, great job so far here in North Texas on what you're doing. And I hope that you continue to do well, uh, both in your personal and in your amateur radio careers. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to be talking about Evan Vander um, Stoep. Uh, probably butchered that last name. Uh, his call sign is Kilo Juliet 7 Bravo Romeo Echo. Uh, this young hand became interested in one of the very basic aspects of amateur radio at the young age of seven. That's soldering and surrogate building. Um, by the time that he turned 13, uh, he met a gentleman by the name of Mark. Uh, his call sign is Whiskey 7 Papa uh, Mary uh, at a mini maker fair. Um, it was then that he got on the air for the first time uh, using one of Mark's radios. It was a Yezu um, FTM 911, I believe, is what it was. I'm not, I'm, but don't quote me on that. Uh, from that moment on, though, he knew that he was hooked. Um, and he went and got his license, um, and he got a free handheld as well. Uh, I believe Mark said that he, if he got his license, he got a free handheld. But he got his license, and within eight months of getting eight months of getting his technician class, he upgraded to general. Um, he also ended up buying the radio that he made his very first QSO on uh, from Mark, and still has that radio to this day so I mean that's really cool you know not being a ham making your first on air QSO uh, with somebody else's radio and then a year later eight months later or whatever end up buying that radio and having it for yourself after he got his license and upgraded um, he became interested in repeaters and he wanted to learn as much as he could about repeaters and he um, started helping his local club with their repeaters but because of his age at the time there wasn't a whole lot that he could do but that didn't stop him because he continued to learn and continued to learn fast forward to today he is uh, 17 years old and he is one of the uh, people one of the group um, of his local club that maintains the club's 19 repeaters um, and this repeater this uh, person is in Oregon um, and from what I'm seeing these repeaters are spread over a big portion of Oregon and they and he helps maintain them um, you know learning about the repeaters how they work what can be done to fix it antennas and coax and all that you know at, from the age of 13 of getting his license and just jumping both feet in and learning this hobby or learning an aspect of this hobby um, is really what it's all about. But anyways, those are the four that I wanted to highlight and I wanted you know I want to make a shout out to all the other young hams out there 
Um, whatever it is that you do, whether you just get on the air and talk uh, on VHF, your local repeaters, whether you get on HF. Um, I saw one, one kid that was like 12, I think, 13 years old, that was extremely proficient in CW. And you don't see that very often. But, you know, whatever it is that you do as a young ham, uh, you know, make it a passion. Um, learn everything that you can. And just go with it. Because this is such an awesome, awesome hobby. And like I've said before in other videos, this is not just a hobby. It is a hobby of hobbies. Or a hobbies of hobby. <laughs> Something like that. Multiple aspects of this hobby that you can get into. From, from anything from just talking on the air to uh, mini maker, uh, maker stuff to DIY stuff to um, digital modes to satellites to you know whatever there's so many aspects of this hobby that you can choose from to grow your passion into this into this hobby um, and it I think it will help you where you will stay in this hobby um, so uh, stick with it and all y'all adults out there if y'all know of a young amateur radio operator um, that has his license and his or her license and uh, you know, make sure that you like. Um, make sure you Elmer them. Make sure that you are there if they need you, um, and bolster their knowledge in the hobby. Help them to advance in it. So next week, like I said, y'all, I'm going to be having a. Uh, I'm going to try and get a video out next Monday, the 30th, on young amateur radio, uh, young. Um, youth on the air Yoda um, before the end of the month and I'm going to try and have a blog post in between then as well so make sure you tune into that until then make sure you check out these two videos I'm going to try and link right over here um, I've been having some issues linking the videos so I'm sorry about that y'all if I point to the areas where they say there's videos and there's not uh, for some reason it hasn't been working for me and I'm going to try and figure it out so I'm going to try and link a couple videos over here um, so make sure you check those out uh, while you're waiting on the uh, Youth on the Air video on Monday. Anyways, y'all, thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, this is K5CLM73, y'all.